Hey guys, welcome back to the Design, Creativity and Technology channel. My name's Aaron. Great news, I've got the moves up and running. Um, today's Sunday and I've been playing with it all day. I've got, uh, I haven't done any 3D printing, but what I have done, I've done some CNC routing or CNC engraving, we can see here. And I've also done some CNC laser etching, guys. How freaking cool is that? Now, I'm not going to worry about the 3D printing side of things, guys. Um, there's other guys doing reviews on these Moose machines, and uh, they can cover that. Um, my forte, obviously, as you know, is, is CNC uh, uh, milling, machining, that sort of thing, and using lasers and plasma cutters. So I, can, I think I can give a bit better review about this. Now... Guys, using this software, um, it is a little bit quirky. Um, the software sees a picture, and instead of doing a proper toolpath, it does a raster toolpath. So it's like an inject printer, moving left to right and top to bottom. Um, when you set up your work offset, it only sees the bottom uh, left corner as the as the uh, work offset. Now, my first uh, attempt at CNC routing didn't go that well. Now a lot of that has to do with the tool bit that was supplied with the machine um, and also this raster tool engrave. The other thing was too guys, I was being a little bit greedy. Um, I'm so used to using big industrial machines that I got a bit carried away and thought I try to push this thing too hard. <laughs> But look, I'm quite happy with the results. I think it re it would be a really good addition to your to your home workshop, especially uh, young stu uh, young people, students, that sort of thing, um, homemakers. Where I see it being beneficial, guys, is obviously to uh, put on your desktop to do whatever you want to do. You can um, you could CNC route uh, circuit boards if you wanted to make your own PCBs. You could 3D print your enclosure for it as well. Uh, you could even do some uh, timber engraving and that sort of stuff with the blue laser diode. Now, um, what else do I have to say? Now, this second toolpath, the first toolpath I'll show you in the video that's coming, so stick with me, is using the Moose software. Now, I did another toolpath, okay? So I went in and I, I had a program on my laptop, my school laptop, um, called um, VCarve Pro. All right. Now, I actually did the toolpath again of VCarve Pro, post-processed it as a G-code. What I did then, I manually edited the G-codes. I chopped out a bit of the moose at the start and end, and I put the VCarve G-code in the middle. So I had the moose start and the moose finish, and it worked friggin' sweet. Much better, guys. And I think you can have a look here. That That's... I've machined that half a mil. Now, this is hardwood, guys. It's not softwood. This uh, this timber here is kiln-dried um, Tasmanian oak. It's very close-knit grain. I don't know if you can see that in that little camera. So it's pretty bloody hard. Alrighty, guys. So stick with me. Let's cut to some videos now and watch this little machine in action. Uh, you'll see me doing the blue laser engraving first. You'll see me change the head of the machine. Um, I'll run the first toolpath using the Moo software, and then I'll flick to the second toolpath running uh, the v the code that was post-processed by VCarve Pro. Um, guys, I think they could do a little bit more work with their um, CNC software side of things. Very easy to use, I must admit. I didn't find it that hard. I, I could see other people finding it hard if you're not used to uh, CNC routing or machining. If you're just a 3D printer guy and you're just used to uh, splicing and clicking and away you go, you may find it a little bit challenging. Uh, having, <laughs> having said that, I find 3D printing challenging. Alrighty guys, let's cut to the footage.
after downloading all the files from the Moose website, and I save these on my desktop, I go into the um, Moose Studio 1.0, and I need to launch the application here, which is called Moose Studio. If I double click on that, it will launch the application. And here we have it here. So now we need to bring in, uh, bring in your photo. So here I'm gonna use the CNC tab first. I'm gonna go File and Import an Image. Okay, now what I did, I actually went to the Moose website and I downloaded this logo here just from Google Images. Now in here, I'm gonna locate that. To resize the image, the image was too big for the, for the bed of 130 by 130, so I just dropped that down 50% uh, by using Paint. Probably not the best program to do it, but it worked for me. So we open it now. As you can see, the software is quite intuitive. You can see this red line around here, which means that it's, uh, it's an error. So you need to click and drag it. Once it's uh, within the working bed, you'll see it turn green, and you'll know that, that was, that's right to go. So here, to convert this to G-code, we, before we do that, we need to set up some parameters on the outside here. Now, I'm actually engraving Tasmanian oak, which is a hardwood timber here that I got from my hardware store in Australia. Now, I'm probably being a little bit greedy, but I was running at 200 millimetres a minute. Now, if I was using a commercial machine like the Haas uh, Mill at School or the big timber router, I'd be running up to 1,000, 2,000, pushing it up to 5,000 millimetres per minute, per minute. But on this little machine, you've got to remember, uh, apples for apples, and don't push it too high because you just don't have the weight or rigidity, rigidity there like a big, large machine. Um, because the, the engraving tool, I'm just going to put a 0.1 tip down here and, and tip diameter. Uh, so we've got, I left the DPI set as standard, 200 millimetres per minute. Now the depth, the ma maximum, now this, this is supposed to be carving depth. I think that's a spelling mistake. I did my carving depth at 0 0.75 millimetres. And from here now I can generate the G-code and it'll appear on my right hand side. Now upon looking at the G-code, they, they don't use... Uh, how do you say, they, they make you set the front left corner as the G54, but in this case, they don't use G54, they use G28, okay, which means um, the, the reference of the machine. Okay, guys, so what you do now, um, you can go File, Export G-Code, and find your micro SD card and save your file there, and then take it to the machine, and okay, let's start engraving. Well, there we have it, guys. That concludes today's review. I want to say a big thank you to Nick and Brian from Moose. Um, I've noticed they've launched the Kickstarter now, and it's going ballistic. So good work, guys. Good stuff. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to review uh, this machine, and uh, I'm very appreciative of it, especially to you, my viewers, guys, as well. Um, really appreciate the support from my viewers, and I love speaking to you. Uh, this one great thing about social media, I've got people from all over the place. I've got a guy called Paul in Cape Cod. Got an, I've got another guy called Otto over on the East Coast. I'm speaking to all these people. It's friggin' awesome. It's really, really good. Uh, Matt, Jason, Jan, Boss, the boys over in South Africa as well. So thanks, guys. Uh, please interact with me. I'll always try uh, to get back to your messages. 
Oh, by the way, I'm off to Autodesk University to, uh, tomorrow night in Sydney, flying out of Melbourne all the way up to Sydney. Should be great, couple of days up there. I'm not presenting this year, so I can just go up and enjoy it. Uh, maybe one day I can get over to the United States and go to Autodesk in Vegas. Now, that would be the bomb. See you guys. Cheers. Ta-da. Ta-da.